Hi, welcome to another episode of Book Covers DIY. Today I'm going to show you how to design a book cover for a post-apocalyptic novel. So let's get started. So here we are on canva.com. This is that free website we use for all of our book cover designs. And before we get started on here, I want to hop on over to Google so you can check out our inspiration for today. With the recent surge in popularity surrounding the new TV series called Fallout, which is based on a post-apocalyptic video game, I thought we would take some inspiration from there. So here I am on Google Images and I just did a search for Fallout. Now over here is the poster that's being used for the TV series. So I think this is going to be sort of our main idea for today's book cover. I want to show you how to do this sort of a picture within a picture. As you can see here, we have this tunnel. I do want to show you how to use that technique, but over here, I think this one here, this Fallout 76, I like this sort of a faded greenish look. So I think I'm going to take the inspiration for the colors from this image. And then I want to do something fun with the uh, title, probably not a lightning bolt or anything like that, but just something fun and unusual. All right, so let's hop back on over to canva.com. Once you register and log in, you'll be taken to a home page that looks similar to this. You can just come up to the top and type book cover into the search bar. It's going to take you over to the book cover templates page where we have over 5,000 templates. You can scroll through here and find one you like to start with. You can also use these filters if you want to look for a particular theme or color. I'm just going to click off of that because as usual, I'm going to start with a blank book cover. So I'll just select this first option right here. It's going to take us over to our design studio. Here on the right is our book cover, which is currently blank. And over here on the left, we have our toolbar and our toolbox, which will change depending on our tool selection. Now I usually start with a photo or a graphic. Oh, I forgot to mention today, since we're going to be focusing on the design aspect, I'm only going to be showing you how to design the front cover. But if you are needing a full book cover, including the back cover and the spine, you can still watch today's video for inspiration and technique. Then hop on over to my print book cover tutorial, where I will go on to show you how to calculate the dimensions needed for your book and design the back cover as well as the spine. Uh, the link is in the description box below, uh, so be sure to check that out right after today's video. So like I was saying, normally I start with a photo and, or an image, but today I'm going to start with the frame. So let's come over here to our toolbar and we're going to click on elements right under design. And then we're going to just scroll all the way down until we see frames right here. It's under tables. We're going to click on see all. And you're going to see all of these different shapes, basic film devices. You can see here, like if you want to put a photo within an iPhone, you could do something like that or a computer screen. There's some other uh, designs like torn paper, blobs, things like that. But I want to just go back up to the top and I want to stick with basic shapes. So I'm going to click on see all and here are the basic shapes. For today, I'm just going to stick with a plain circle. Okay, so I clicked on the circle and it appeared over here. Now that we have our circle here that's going to be for our tunnel, let's go find a photo. So now I'm going to use this back arrow here next to basic shapes and again next to frames. It's going to take us back to elements and right here in the search bar, I'm going to type in, uh, let's type in apocalypse. As you can see, I haven't even finished typing it in. It's already giving me suggestions. Apocalypse, zombie apocalypse, post-apocalyptic. Um, I'm just going to stick with apocalypse. So here are our results. We have graphics, photos, videos, etc. I think for today, I'm going to use a photo. So if you go right across, you're going to see it says see all. You can click in there. Uh, and here are all of our results. Now you will notice some of these photos have a little crown in the corner and when you hover over them, they say pro. That means those photos are only available with Canva Pro, which is the paid version. If you are using the free version and you wanna filter those out, you can just come right back up to your search bar and you'll see these three lines with three circles. Click in there, go down to price and click on free and then just click off to the side and you can see it has filtered out all of the paid images. And you can see there are still tons of results. So don't think that only the good results are with the paid version. Right now I do have Canva Pro, so I'm actually going to uncheck that and then just click off to the side. I'm actually gonna make this small again and just kind of move it out of the way because I want to 
select a few of these photos to see which ones we like best. Uh, here's one here. It's kind of got that green color I was going for. Okay, so there's one there. I'm going to move, make that smaller and kind of just move it out of the way. Oh, and the way I'm making it smaller is, um, as you can see, when I click on it, there are these four dots in the corner. All you have to do is click on one and drag it in or out to make it smaller or larger. I'm going to move that over and let's see what else there is. Here's one with a couple of people. This one has four people. I probably just want to stick with maybe one, so I'm going to delete that. To delete an image, you just have to click on the little trash can. Okay, so we have three choices here. This one's a little bit plain, a little bit boring. I'm going to get rid of that one. And this one's facing the camera, but I kind of think I like the idea of the back. And I do like the dog. There's also a dog in Fallout as well. All right, so I think I'm going to go with this one here. So let me get rid of this gas mask one and delete that. Now I'm going to show you how we can put this photo into this frame. So I'm going to bring this frame back to the center and make it larger. And now I'm going to make the photo larger as well. Okay, so the way to insert a photo into a frame shape is all you have to do is take your photo and slide it over it. You can see it's already being framed, and then once you let go, there it is. But as you can see, it did not center it. Uh, so don't think that once you insert it that you're stuck with it. All you have to do is double click. And so once you double click, you can see that now the entire photo reappears. I'm actually going to probably make it bigger. I think I want to get rid of that second dog and the spaceship. So see, I'm moving it around. And I, again, I'm going to grab the corners and reposition it. I can still see that second dog. And I'm going to have, instead of just the guy in the center, I'm going to have the guy and the dog. We'll say they're our main characters. I think that looks good. The spaceship's cut out. The second dog's cut out. All right, once it's placed the way you want it, you can just click on done. Now you can see it just has a purple square. So now when you grab the corners, you're stretching or shrinking the whole thing. Okay, so now we have it inside our frame. I want to edit this photo. Uh, it's a little bit dark, so I want to probably lighten it up. So I've just clicked on the photo and then I'm gonna come over here and click on edit photo. I want to go down to this category here, filters, and I'm gonna click on see all. This is gonna change the tone of our photo. There's different categories. There's natural, warm, cool, vivid, soft, vintage, mono. Those are black and white, and then these color pops. There are more than three in each category. There's a little arrow that you can click and it'll go to the side to show the rest of the options. So all I'm gonna do is click on a few to find one I like. So let me try right here, the zeal. Oh, that's a little bit too green. Let's look under cool. Oh, I kind of like this one here under the warm category, Capri. Okay, so you can go through here with your photo and, and try out different filters. If you decide you don't like any of the filters, you can always come back up here and click on none and it'll revert back to the original photo. All right, so I have selected Capri, but I still want to tweak the lighting and things like that. So let me click on this back arrow and then it's going to send us back to the previous toolbox. We are currently under the effects category. See the purple line here? I want to switch over to the middle category, which are the manual adjustments. Right, so you can see it change once I click on it. All right, now Canva has added this great new feature where instead of changing the lighting and the brightness on your whole image, which is how it's been done for years, they have now added this option where you can change just the background or the foreground. So let's go and click on background. So now any changes we make are only gonna happen to the background. First thing I wanna do is I'm gonna come down here to brightness. I wanna brighten it up. It's a little bit too dark. Then I'm gonna come back up to temperature. I think I might put that like at a 70 and then here's the tint. So you can just go through all of these different sliders and adjust your photo until you're happy with it. All right, so once you have adjusted the background, then you can come back up here to the area selector. And this time I'm gonna select foreground. So this time it's only gonna change the guy and the dog. Let me go to brightness, see how light it got, but it did not affect the background because we've already adjusted that. So actually I might lighten this up just a little bit. All right, so once you've made your adjustments for the foreground, uh, you can just click off to the side. 
Now we need to go and find some sort of tunnel because remember this is going to be a photo like within a photo. So I'm going to come back up here um, and I'm still in elements. If you have accidentally clicked off of there, just click on elements again. And then this time we're going to type in, um, I guess let's just type in tunnel and see what we come up with. Okay, I want photos because obviously look at the graphics, they're like cartoony. So let's go under photo photos and click on see all. Here's sort of a futuristic sort of space tunnel. I want to find a, oh, something like this. I think I like this one here. I'm going to click on this photo and it's going to appear over here. Okay, so for this photo, I'm just going to stretch it out. I want it to cover the entire book cover. And yes, it's going to cover that photo, but I'm going to show you how to fix that. You'll know it's centered when the center line appears, a solid line. Now our photo is centered, but we have covered our original photo of the guy and the dog. So what we need to do is while this photo is selected, we're going to come up here to this toolbar and we're going to click on position. It's going to default to the arrange tab. We want to click on layers, this tab. When you click on layers, you're going to be able to see all the different layers in your photo. So if you have a bunch of photos or a bunch of text boxes, they are all going to be lined up here. So this photo is currently on top and that is why we can't see this. Imagine if this was a stack of papers, this would be the top page and then this would be beneath it. We need this page to be on top. This layer needs to be the top layer. So all we have to do is click on that one you can see when I clicked on it, even though we still can't see it, we see the little box for it. We're going to drag that to the top and then let go. And then there is our photo. So now I want to bring this photo up and now I'm going to stretch that until it matches the circle in our tunnel and right about there. So once it is in position, we're going to click off to the side. Now I don't want to leave this larger photo or the tunnel this gray. I want this tunnel to be very cohesive with the image in the center. So I need to add a filter to that as well. So I'm going to click on the larger photo and you can see again, we have this big rectangle box because we have selected that one. Now I need to go to edit photo and back down to filters, click on see all. So now we're going to be adding a filter to just the tunnel. Pool, let's see, Astro, no. Tundra. Okay, Tundra is getting pretty close. See, it's got that teal. Oh, I love the way it has the golden browns and then the teal. So once we have chosen our filter, we're going to go back. And again, we are on the effects tab. I want to go to the manual adjustment. So I'm going to click on adjust. This time, I can just leave it on whole image because it's just one image. It doesn't really have a foreground and a background. So I'm just going to leave the area on whole image. And I'm going to adjust the temperature. Let me adjust the brightness. Okay, I definitely want to add a vignette to it. A vignette's going to make it dark around the four corners. So I'm going to go down here and you can see as I'm adding, it's getting completely dark. I don't want that. I think that looks pretty great. So you can see we are able to make that second photo cohesive with the first photo. All right, so I'm just going to click off to the side. Okay, so I'm very happy with that. Now let's go and add our title. So I'm going to come back over here to our toolbar and on this time I'm going to click on text. All right, so you can see our toolbox changed. So now we have all these texts. Oh, I'm so excited because Canva has added all of these new pre-made titles. Um, I mean, they had a good selection before, but now there are so many more. Even though I'm probably not gonna use one today, I still wanna show you guys because this has all just recently been added. Okay, so again, you'll see some that have the crown. Those are for Canva Pro, but look at all of these new pre-made titles that have been added. There are so many. Look at this one here. Scary story, neon sign. There's a vintage one. Look at this cut and paste. These are all so fun. This is all brand new. Oh, I love this one here, this brunch one. This kind of reminds me like of Clueless or something, or you know, maybe SpongeBob, something like that. Uh, look at this one, Coffee Person. Oh, this one's great, TV Signal. Look at that. Puff Love, look at that. I got really excited when I saw these uh, the other day because I was like, oh, you are gonna be so excited about all the new choices in the pre-made titles. So again, if you wanna choose one of these, you can. Let me just click on one, this is a free one. So when you click on it, it appears over here. You can go in, of course, you can change it. Um, the book title. Um, if you want to take off, like right now it's got like this 3D effect on it. That is under effects. You can come up here, click on effects. See, it's a glitch. Uh, you can click on none and it goes away or you can use an outline or any one of these special effects. So don't think if you choose a pre-made title that you're stuck with how it's originally made. You can still go in effects and change it up and you can change the colors and everything else like that. All right, so 
let me delete that one because we're not going to use that but i just wanted to show you but yeah it's exciting all the fun new things they're doing in canva okay so i'm going to scroll back up to the top and i'm going to click on add a heading and we're going to get a text box over here right now it is black and it's going to be hard to see uh, so i'm going to go ahead and change the color uh, probably just to white or something right now to do that we're going to come up here make sure your text box is selected we're going to come up here to this a with a rainbow line beneath it that is a text color when you click in there you can see your toolbox change and now you have all of these color palettes if you scroll to the bottom you're going to see default colors you can just click on any one of these and you can see the text box changes to match whatever color you click on also right here in the center it's going to say photo colors Anytime you select a photo in Canva or download one of your own, it creates a color palette from that photo. So here's our first photo with the guy and the dog, and here are some colors it pulled from that image. This one is the one of the tunnel, but I believe this is the way the tunnel originally looked. And see, that's why it's got so many whites and grays before we tweaked it. So all of your choices are gonna be like charcoals. Ignore this top part, because those are my branding colors. But if you scroll to the top, you can see this rainbow box with the plus sign. You can click in there and you have these sliders. I always like to start with the bottom slider, the rainbow one. That is your base color. So let's say we wanted a base color of green. We would place it there and then we would use this slider to select our shade. Look over here and as I move the slider, you're going to see the color changing. And then another thing you can do is you can see that there is an eyedropper tool here. You can click on that eyedropper and then you can click on anything in your photo. For instance, I'm going to click on this sort of yellow golden ring at the end of the tunnel. The title will change to match whatever pixel you click on. So, so you can see it change the match. So watch when I place it over the tunnel, it blends in because it's matching that color. Let's do that again. Come back over to the rainbow box, click in there and click on the eyedropper. We can match it to the background of the sky. Again, you can do this as many times as you want. And let's go with the teal part of the tunnel here. And you can see it changed to match that. All right, so once you have selected your color, let's just click off to the side and then I'm just gonna place it for right now for here. Now we have to think of a title. Instead of Fallout, let's just call this, um, let's call this shelter, like a Fallout shelter. Okay, if you wanna make your title larger, you can either click on one of the corners and stretch it out, or you can come up here to this font size box, click in there and you're going to get some different numbers. It goes to 144. Um, you can also use the plus and the minus. I prefer to just drag the corner to the size I want. Now we need to choose our font. I always like to write my title before we select the font because the best way to choose your font is to see the title written in it. All right, so let's come up here and we're gonna click on Canvas Sans and then now we're gonna get all of our different font choices. Um, you can skip past recommended, recently used. You wanna scroll down until you start seeing them uh, in alphabetical order. Uh, as you can see right here, I think they start right about here. What does it say? Ad I'm actually gonna click on it. Advertime, Advertime. Okay, so that's kind of where they begin at Advertime, which is a pretty horrible looking font if it's in all caps. If you select a font like this, please make sure that you make the other letters lowercase. It's still a little bit difficult to read, but yeah, definitely don't choose all caps or something like that. Okay, so we're going to just kind of go through here and click on some to find what we like. That one was actually would look great with this image but I'm going to keep looking because I want something a little bit unique and fun how we were talking about how Fallout has that like lightning bolt in it so I want to find something a little bit uh, unique. Okay guys I found one that I really like it has the letters where one is lower and one is higher but I don't like the original skinny version of this. If you select a font and you notice it has an arrow next to it that means there are other options so I'm going to click in there. Okay so here is regular where we are right now and there is bold. Bold is the one I want. I'm really liking the way that looks. Uh, but I definitely need to change this color and the size. Okay, let me bring the side in to just where it's almost going to touch each letter and then I'm going to stretch out. And then I'm going to center it. You'll know it's centered again when the solid line appears. Oh, another thing I want to do is Fallout is italicized. Let me see if I can italicize that. So while it is still selected, I'm going to come up here and see where next to the bowl that has italics. Okay, that's perfect. Okay, 
So now we have it italicized, and now I need to go change the color. I don't want that sort of sherbet green, but I do want something sort of yellow green. So let me, while it's selected, let me go ahead and click in that. And I'm gonna move the slider a little bit more towards the greenish yellow. Okay, that color right there. It's not sending out too well, so I think I need to go to the special effects. So let's come up here to effects and there's different options. You can do an outline. We can change the color. It defaulted as a sort of olive green. You can click in that box and let's just, oh, that's way too dark. But we can try out any of these colors or again, we can scroll up and we can use the eyedropper and select maybe that looks pretty cool like that or maybe from the uniform. Or if we don't want an outline, we can do a shadow. Here, let me zoom in so you can see. You can see it created a shadow, but it just defaults to the same color. So we want to change that color. Again, I'm going to click in this little box and I'm going to add a new color with the eyedropper tool. Let's use something from the uniform. Okay, so see it made a darker color. If we want to increase the transparency right here is where we do that on this slider. Let me try 65. All right, now let me zoom out to see the, how that looks. The zoom is right down here. You see right now it's at 69%. I'm gonna zoom back out. Hmm, I think I want it a little bit darker. Let's go back to transparency. Maybe 75, make it slightly larger. Okay, so there is our title. For this book, I think I want to have a tagline or something up here. I can either come over here and start all over, but instead, I'm just going to click on this, and then right above it, you're gonna see there's our trash can, but we, we don't wanna click on that. But to the immediate left of it, it says duplicate. We're gonna duplicate that, and then now we have already the text box with the same font, the same color, and the special effect of that shadow. So we don't have to go through all of those steps again. Uh, the only thing I will do is definitely make it smaller because we're gonna write a sentence or something. Let me think of something. Uh, let's see. Okay, that's just... <laughs> Our tagline, the end is the beginning. Again, I want it on one line, not two lines, so I have to keep stretching it. And let's center it. Let me show you another way to center your text box. I put it off to the right on purpose. Um, you can click on it and come up to position and see, you know how we were on layers? Oh, but that's good because you can see all the different layers we have now. This time I wanna click on arrange and then right here it says align to page. I wanna click on center. When I click on center, you're gonna watch this jump over to the center, like that. Uh, and then if you want it aligned to the top of your page, you would click that. I definitely do not want it that high, but that's a good starting place. So I'm gonna probably bring that maybe right here to just kind of fill in that voided area. Okay, now we need our author name. For the author name, I'm actually gonna choose a different font. So let's come over here to add a subheading. It's gonna give us a smaller text box. It's gonna to default to that same color. We're probably gonna change that though. Let's think of a fake author name. Um, instead of Philip K. Dick, let's just say Phil Wick. I wanna move it, maybe down here, but I can't grab it until I click off to the side and back on. Okay, let's choose a different font. I don't want it to compete with this because this is the one that's gonna stand out, but that is way too plain. So let's go in there and let's find... Okay, I found what I like. This one is called Squada One. Let me zoom in. Let's change that color. Okay, I'm gonna come up here to the A with the text color. It's defaulting to that. Let's try a few of these that are, oh, that's too dark. What about this light one? Let me zoom out again. Let's change it to PJ Wick. I like it with the initials. Okay guys, I think we're done with this cover, but as always, I'd like to show you how to make a second cover so you can give your viewers a choice and have them vote on your final book cover. We are not gonna start all over again. We are just going to duplicate this. I'm gonna show you how we can move things around and adjust this existing book cover uh, to have a second option. So we are gonna come up to the top and right above our design here in this upper right, the sender option says duplicate page. We're gonna click on that and it's gonna give us a page two, as you can see right here with our entire design duplicated. See, page one, 
page two. Just make sure you are on page two when you make your changes. We don't want to mess up all that work we just did. Okay, so here we are on page two. The first thing I want to do is adjust our image. Um, let's click on the background. Okay, so I want to group these two together because if not, when we move the background, the circle, is everything's going to get off kilter. So let's click on the background and you're going to see this big rectangle. Then hold down your shift key and then click on this inner photo, which is for me, it's this guy and his dog. I'm going to click on there. Now you can see we have the large rectangle and the small square highlighted. You also notice this little toolbar appears. We're going to click on group and it's going to group them together. You can see it says ungroup. If for any reason later you want to ungroup them, you can. But when you group these two images together, it allows us to move all of it. So we don't have to worry about the circle getting out of line with the tunnel. So now I'm going to grab the corner and stretch it. Probably stretch this way and make it much larger. Probably bring it down some. I think on this one I might actually put the title at the top. Let's move the title up there right now. Okay, and then for this one, I think I might want to, because um, it's going to be a little bit hard to see that. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is, since there is so much light now on the tunnel, I'm going to add a vignette, uh, and not the vignette we used over in the edit photo. I'm going to actually go to Elements over here, click on Elements, and where we search for tunnel, I'm going to clear that, and I'm going to just type in vignette. Uh, this time we're going to go under graphics and not photos. So I'm going to click on see all. I want one that is just half or like just the top. Let me try out this one here. I'm going to place this up here and then stretch it out. And then I want to put another one at the bottom. First, let's lighten it. It's too dark. To lighten it, we're going to come up here to transparency. It's a little checkerboard you're going to see. It's at 100. Let's bring that down because I want it slightly darker, not all the way. So maybe a 75. Actually, let's just do it to 50. Now I want to do the exact same thing in the bottom. All I have to do is duplicate this one. So there it creates a second one. Okay, so I want to take this one here and I want to flip it because it's on top. I want it to be down here at the bottom. So I'm just going to come over here to this word that says flip and you have a choice to flip it horizontally or vertically. You want to flip it vertically. So you can see now the shade goes to the bottom. Now you got to be careful when you're dragging over the circle. You can see it's wanting to insert it in there. Don't let go because then it's going to be your actual photo now. If you accidentally let go too soon, you can just come up here to this undo, this little back arrow and undo it. So let me place it right there. Okay, so now we have this shadow at the top and bottom, but you notice that our letters got dark here. That means it must be on top. So let's come up here to position and make sure we're on the layers tab. And yep, look, see, uh, we need to have these vignettes behind the words, but over the photo. This one is on the very top layer. We don't want that. So let's just bring it down here. And all of the text boxes should be the top layers. Then our vignettes over our photo. Okay, so this is going to just help these words to stand out on this one. Okay, so now that everything is in proper place, let's go ahead and come up here. And this time we'll put the end of it's the beginning at the bottom. I think I might want to make a shelter much bigger for this one. Okay, and then let's put the name larger and make this larger as well. Oh, you know what I didn't do? On the author name, I want to put a sort of a overall shadow. Let me come back up to this one. We're going to click on the one on the first cover and then we're going to go to effects. And this time we're not going to do this like double shadow. We're going to click on lift. Let me zoom in so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm going to click on lift and it's going to get dark behind it. See a little bit. And then when you increase the intensity, that's going to help it stand out. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing to this one. Let's come over here. Okay, again, I'm going to click on PJ Wick and we're going to click on lift. Did you notice it got dark? Look, here's none. Watch right here in this lighter area. And then there's lift. And then I'm going to increase that all the way to 100. And then I'm going to zoom out and you're going to see that it stands out much better. Okay, guys, I think that's it. We have our two different book cover versions here. Let me show you how we can download those and check those out. So first thing we want to do is um, we want to come up here and change the project name. It's, it's defaulted to 
game title because oh i think the first title i chose uh was game over so let me uh change that we're gonna call this shelter book covers all right and then we're gonna click on share and then download it defaults to pdf standard for print i'm not printing anything today i'm just gonna select png so we can check these out side by side and then under all pages two, yes, I want both of them. If you didn't, you would uncheck the one you don't want. So now let's click on download. And it only takes a few seconds for that to get across. All right, so our file is ready. It's gonna be a zip file because again, I have two files or two um, images in there. So I'm gonna double click on the zip. It's gonna open them in a folder, double click on the folder. And there are two covers. Let me open these and We'll check them out. Okay, so here are two covers. Uh, they're inspired by the um, poster for the Fallout TV series. You can see here we did the picture within the picture with the back of a person. So we just took inspiration from that and made our own two covers. First we selected our circle frame and then we selected our photo, inserted it inside there. Again, you can choose any shape of frame. Uh, then we chose our tunnel. We tweaked each photo. This one we, we used that cool feature of the foreground and the background. Uh, to adjust our colors and our lighting and everything. And then with our tunnel, we did the same thing. We selected a filter that matched our inside photo. Uh, and then again, went to manual adjustments to tweak that. We chose a fun font here. This one again was called BP Imperial. You know, it has the unique letters, the up and down letters, which are kind of seem to be at random, like the T's, the L's. I had no control over which ones were, you know, tall or short. We chose this bright, you know, greenish yellow color. We added a shadow to it. I didn't choose a black shadow because aside from the dog, there's nothing really black in the photo, but we used the eyedropper tool and used this like really dark bluish turquoise blue um, to help make the shadow and we increased the transparency. Then we duplicated it uh, for our tagline, the end is the beginning, and then we added our author name. And so that is our first cover. Then we duplicated that and uh, don't forget to group together uh, your two photos before stretching it. Otherwise, you know, the inside photo is going to stay small and you're going to have to line it all up again. So we grouped our two photos together by holding down shift, stretched it out much larger. You can see uh, more of the focus is on the two main characters. And then we added a vignette at the top. We duplicated it and flipped it at a vignette at the bottom. So you can see it just kind of adds some darkness. Make sure to go into your layers to make sure those are behind uh, uh, your titles. Uh, the titles and the author name should be the first or the top layer. Then we swapped our title to the top and our tagline to the bottom. Enlarge our title. Uh, we enlarge actually everything on the, all of the text boxes. Same thing here. We moved our um, author name up here. All right, so I hope you like this tutorial. Please let me know which book cover you like, A or B. Let me know in the comments section below. Make sure to hop on over to my print book cover tutorial to continue the lesson with uh, learning how to design the back cover of your book as well as the spine. The link is in the description box below, so be sure and check that out. Also, I wanna let you know that memberships are now open. I haven't done a video on this yet. I'm gonna do a video kind of telling you everything that's included with each level, but I just wanna go ahead and give you a heads up that we now have memberships available here in YouTube. But if you wanna go ahead and check out uh, what each level offers, you can, I believe, just click on join and you'll be able to see all of the perks uh, included in each level. And if you can't join right now, that is perfectly fine. A great way to support my channel is just by liking, subscribing, and hitting that notifications bell. I greatly appreciate any and all support. So that's it for today. Thanks again for watching, liking, and subscribing. Until next time, bye-bye.